Man, we're back. COVID is keeping us down. We're here. We're in it. We're in quarantined it. Quarantined up. Yeah, quarantined up to from the feet up. <laughs> how's, how's your recent quarantining been, Alex? Good, man. I've been playing video games a lot. That's uh-huh, been like yeah. most of it. You know what I've been thinking about for the whole last week? Our mm-hmm. conversation about how I'm going to be so left behind when the world goes to controllers. Yep. You're screwed. I'm done. I'm like, do, is there a book I can read or something? Like, oh, thumb dexterity, baby. You just got to uh, get with the times. Getting to a point of, of like, out of necessity, should I buy some kind of game? Some kind of gaming <laughs> console? Like, just to figure it out? That's been on my mind, man. It's been on my mind. That's so funny. Do you think, yeah, I think, I don't know, cars maybe. It seems like the next logical step, really. Yeah, but even just like, everyday life stuff if it gets more like oh do you think electric cars are going to do well in the cold because your phone like your phone powers down if you leave it in your car for too long see yeah if you leave it in your pocket for fucking too long if if you're outside or that's a good point and like i would love i would love uh if if uh electric cars were you know a thing or you know were available to the, the average person? I guess they kind of are right now. Like, I don't know. I don't know if it's a problem or not, but it feels like it would be one of if there were. Problems. I think that's pretty legit. And, you know, maybe not for most places that would yeah, happen. Yeah, most of the world probably like, doesn't have to worry about that. We would just be this little special case of, like, what about those guys? And we're like, uh, you'd be sitting on the side of Highway 2 with your electric car, like, <laughs> ugh. Yeah, someone's like, you need a boost. No, we're like, no, we'll just get it ourselves, and then we'll use it. Yeah, like what happens if you get if you break down somewhere far from an electric charging station, which I imagine is most places far from an electric charging station. What happens? Who come, who comes to save you? Does the AMA come by with like their? I imagine so. Yeah, you're still an automobile, so they probably just throw you up on a flatbed and take you off oh but i'm just wondering how you because you, you like wonder what their equivalent of like getting boosted is <laughs> can someone just like <laughs> bring some double a's over to you <laughs> just give you a quick charge <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't know there's a whole plan i i don't i haven't looked at the plan in a while but california was planning on being full electric by like 2025 or something like that a lot of places are talking about like in the next decade and I mean, it's yeah, really more affordable than driving uh, the, norm, the normal vehicle. It'll be a quick, quick transition. Yeah. That. And I think it was, I forget which company it was, but it was like a, it was a big one. It was like Mercedes or something like that. Said that they were going to be full electric by like 2030 or something like their full model That's wild, line. Man. That's wild. See, yeah. The, the thing about it right now is that it's, you know, it's, it's expensive to drive. But for the for the kind of average person with a job or whatever, a bit of an income or whatever, you kind of I know for me, I've sort of just accepted a lot of the costs associated with driving. And so I don't really think too much about how expensive it really is. But between like all the I mean, I drive a lot less now because I live downtown, but it's not really that expensive to be a driver. So I think that's gonna be one of the things that slows down the transition to electric because it's like, ah, I mean. If you have like a huge truck, yeah, you spend a pile on, on gas, but like, I think it's like, it's not, it's not like very cost prohibitive to drive right now. And so people aren't going to be motivated to change unless there's some like real incentive other than like, you'll feel good because it's electricity. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, there's a lot of talk about like automation as well, which uh, that's, that's an interesting one. I just hope there's race tracks. I hope that like later in life, it's like the horse tracks. You can just go race your car there. Go bet, yeah. Go bet on the cars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With people in them or just the cars? Sorry. Just the cars. No people. No, no people. Like people driving them, like petrol engine cars. Like oh, I see. (laughs) I thought you meant like everyone's got their electric car, so they just take it to the track and they sit up on the fucking. No, no, no. So it'll it'll be like it'll be like a super novelty thing. Yeah, like you know how everyone used to ride horses, like that used to be our mode of transportation. Yeah. And it didn't yeah. disappear, but it disappeared as a mode of transportation. Now we use them to like dance and shit. So like I think oh, we're still gonna be, be like, car dancing. 
Yeah, there's going to be drift competitions and, like, car shows. And then, like, you're going to be able to go watch, like, a compact version of the Indy 500. Just dudes going, like, in a fucking yeah. horse track. And you know what? There will be protesters at every single one. And they'll be like, how dare you pollute? Because yeah. yeah, and it'll be like PETA, who is upset about the horses getting shot in the fucking head. Yeah, I mean, you know, the whole the whole horse thing is... Yeah, the horse racing injury thing. How else are we supposed to make glue? Yeah, that's true. And like, I mean, that's really the only argument, actually. <laughs> it's the <laughs> only logical <laughs> argument ever. Every other one is like, it's pretty fucked up. It's like, oh no, this, this horse sprained its ankle. <laughs> no, it's a sprain. I wonder if the horses are ever just like, dude, it's not that bad. Try to walk it off. <laughs> I walk it off. I walk it off. That was easy. Learn how to walk on three legs. Just kind of like make it look like you're like you're. That, if I was a horse and I knew what might be, uh, that's what I'd be working on. I'd be working on trying to walk, trying to play it cool. Yeah, I think it's that just be my horse it cool. I think they're like, well, this horse is not worth any money anymore. So let's send her to the old scrapyard. And have you ever seen a horse try to use crutches? <laughs> <laughs> Does it do so good or what? I don't think so. No. They no? Don't the... That doesn't work. They don't have the dexterity for it? Yeah, they're, they're, not, they're not for them. They're not for them. I think, they, I think they can do it, Jim. I don't know why you're being so negative towards these horses. They can, I think they could, if they put their mind to it. I'll be honest. I'm not a big fan of horses. I like I like their contribution to to history and such, but uh, not a big fan. Don't I had someone I forget who it was. It was someone in the Edmonton comedy scene, though. I think I might know, but I don't want to say the wrong name. Um, but they told me they had a fear of like I forget what it was, but it was like very specific. There was like horses and like elk and like things like that, like that oh. type of animal like zebras and moose <laughs> and shit really yeah it has like a name and it's oh. like that specific like whatever umbrella of animals yeah and she said that it was because they have like those their eyes are just solid black balls and it's creepy you can't like look into them i mean yeah i you know haven't been face to face enough with the two I, that yeah no i'm that's the that's a little bit, that's a little bit much. I just don't like, uh, like riding them. Cause I just feel like. I love one, riding horses. One false move and it's over. Super. You're driving a car too. What are you false moving? You can't, I, what do you I just don't, I just don't want to get hopped off a horse. That's my, that's my big thing. I yeah, never ride it. Don't fucking kick it. Well, no, oh dude. But, but like this one time I was on a horse and, uh, and uh, and it like went up on its That's legs. A story already. What were you wearing? How old were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one time I was on the horse. You know, oh, no, 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 no. But it was, uh, I'm good, bro. This one time I was on the horse. Come on, what do you know? No, no, it, it got up on its hind legs, and the dude's like, just kick it. And I was like, I'm not going to kick it. <laughs> Where were you? What? In what Mexico. This was in Mexico, so that probably explains it. You were in Mexico, right? It was, this little, it was this little sad Mexican horse, but he's just like, just kick it. And I was like, I don't think Is this like good. an excursion? Yeah. Did you pay some lady 75 bucks at your resort to take you to ride the sad horses? A, a, a boat took us somewhere. Some people went zip lining. Some people went sad horse riding. <laughs> fucking not, it was not a good It went sad horse my, riding. My guy went up on its things, and I'm like, whoa, shit. And this was like right away, and I'm like, oh, no. And yeah, the guy's just like, kick it. Kick it. Like, kick it. I don't want to, I'm not picking a fight. I'm not trying to, <laughs> like me and this me and this horse are gonna fucking duke it out. No, that's so funny. Just always Man, I had one of the, I love those excursions. Those little like yeah. one time me and my buddies. This was probably the most fun excursion we ever went on. It was like a zipline ATV combo one, mm -hmm. and so it was like whatever, however much bucks, yeah, yeah. and you go and do the two. And so we were like zip lining, and these dudes were just like, they had no concern for safety at all. They were like showing us how to zip line like upside down and shit. And then, uh, so we do all that. And then we get on like the ATVs, and we start like, we're just in the parking lot, and it was me and my two buddies. 
And then this like group of guys from um, Georgia. Okay. So we were like talking to these bros and they're just like Southern boys, like, yeah, fuck whatever. And like, so they all had four by fours and shit. So we were just like doing donuts in the parking lot, like drifting them and like whatever. And like the Mexican dudes like came out and they were like, oh shit, like you guys know how to ride these things, eh? And we were all just like, yeah, like we fucked around on them before. Like, okay, let's go. Uh -huh. And so they like took us because we were the only ones in the group. And we just like ripped through the jungle and shit. And, like they're taking us, we like, got air off like those little like berms where you go over the road they were like let's go and we all just fucking gunned it oh my and then God. Uh, they took us to these big like cenotes which are like these holes oh, in the ground cool. yeah, from yeah. like the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs or whatever and R.I.P. <laughs> that's seriously that's what it's from i learned that this year i'm reading books oh. I'm reading science books. The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs, they think, hit kind of near Mexico. And so that's like just the cenotes? Yeah. Wow. So the cenotes are kind of like left over from the impact or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, so they're like these huge, and we were jumping into these big holes of water as though. Yeah, those are sick. The, yeah, the, the, uh, the cenotes are cool. They're kind of like, they're creepy a little bit, but they're awesome. They're what? They're, they're a little creepy, but they're awesome. Yeah, they're weird. There's like bats and shit in them. They're like dark and like... Yeah, and there's fish all in them and stuff. And it's like... Ooh. Yeah. And like God knows how deep they are. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, they're just... They're crazy. Like we were That's jumping... Of like, a, of like a horror, <laughs> but like, so, like something sucking you into a cenote. That's a... Yeah, for sure. Like all of a sudden just a shark shows up in it. You're like, oh my God. Oh no. Oz, Mexico. <laughs> Let's make a movie, baby. Oh, dude, you're right. And the older I get, the Rocky older I get. Hat, dude, I got my fucking October baseball Blue Jay shirt on. Nice. Yes, sir. Bonus. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, dude, as I get older, the more I realize, like, how insanely ridiculous the plot to, like, every single movie ever is mm. it's like i used to think that james bond was like kind of plausible it's like no no dude knows how to fly the airplanes and like drift a car like that and like yeah. clean a gun and like all that kung fu shit like no one knows <laughs> all those things all of a sudden all of a sudden you're skiing down the side of a mountain with a parachute on and a gun and all, like, all kinds of weaponry and stuff. It's like, how? What? Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't think it was, like, word for word real. But you know what I mean? Like, I thought there yeah. would be, like, a guy that would be, like, a super spy. who was, like, trained in how to do all this. It's like, no, even in the military, it's like, the fucking guy who flies the plane only ever flies the goddamn plane and could not tell you how to do any of the tank shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, like, any of the stuff. Like, he also isn't very good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, probably. And probably that he's if, if he's good at those things, he might not be an expert marksman, an incredible, yeah. an incredible stunt driver. Yeah, um, yeah. Not like a fucking pilot, I'm sure. Probably not that fast. Yeah, he's very fast. Just a guy who's good at everything. Yeah, that's a bit. That's a bit much. Now that you now that you mention it. <laughs> that unrealistic expectations for young boys. Yeah, but even what the hell did you mention like one second ago before I said that? You mentioned a movie. Oh, yeah, the shark thing in the Jaws. cenotes. Jaws. Like every single horror movie is such an insane premise. Like this would never even remotely be close to happening. Yeah, and it's funny because maybe at the time, like I'm thinking of movies from like the, the 90s, early 2000s, stuff like that, where you look at them now, like the screams and the I know what you did last summers and stuff. And you watch them now and you're like, like this is such cheese ball shit. But like yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, that movie was scary, bro. What was that one like when a stranger calls or whatever? Like, it's coming from inside the house. Yeah, well, was that scream with the like spooky mask, like the call is coming from inside the house. Oh, was it? I don't know. I remember it was from like when cell phones first came out. So they called the cell phone company and they're like, where's the call coming from? That was like when everyone realized you could trace a call. They're like, what? Oh my God. Yeah. You remember that? You remember old, like, 
old phone things you had to like trace calls or like star six nine to star get six, like nine. whoever called you to call them back yeah dude and if a number calls you you could look it up and you would find out who it was now in like the cell phone generation you just there's no way you have no idea who's ever calling you ever i get no i say i get 10 phone calls in a week nine of them are garbage full, full absolutely time. nothing yeah from countries like Russia and France and yeah, and just with seven eight old area codes. Yeah, yeah, they look sort of like your own number, and you're like, hmm. yeah, yeah, always the first three digits are the same. There's a lot yeah. of seven eight zero two eight nines coming in. But then, like, if you don't answer your phone ever, it's like, well, who? See, okay, the last phone update for for iPhone, it had this thing where you could silence what what it, the what the phone deemed were like. Uh, pr- you know, not prank calls, but like spam calls. So I'm like, well, that sounds good. But then it just fucking silenced every call I got. And I was like, <laughs> Did everyone. Yeah, but it, even my front door, I was like, yo, man, like this this number's called my phone a million times. <laughs> this <laughs> is saved in my phone, and there's like recent history. Yeah, basically, it just seemed like any number that called, they're like, oh, seems suspicious. No one would call Jim. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, this guy doesn't have friends. It's like, man, I might get like the, you don't know the doctor's number. Like, like yeah, bro, I have a dentist appointment tomorrow. And the dentist called me and I was like, I'm not fucking answering this. And then they left a message. And I was like, oh, what is this about? And then I was like, oh, it's the nice lady at the dentist. Yeah. I, I hate when people leave messages for me. It, it gives me like a weird, like, I just, I like don't check them. I, won't I like it. I like it when it's something like that's what I want you to do because I'm not going to answer your gosh darn phone call. So I leave me a it. message. Tell me what you need to know. And if I deem it important, I will call you back. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if you're yeah. like related to me, don't leave a message. I know what you're calling about. I'll call I was, was going to say, you. if you're like, if you're like related or a friend, text me. Yeah. If you don't know to text me, I'm not sure that we're that good friends. Yeah, yeah exactly. But yeah, if it's like a doctor or like if some something to do with comedy or like a work thing, just call, leave a message. If I'll get back to you if I want to. Yeah, you know what I need to get better at is telling to like telemarketer types from like say for example Telus to just like beat it instead of just being like yeah I know I'm busy right now and they're like I'll call another time and you're like I'm always just like uh, okay I need to just next time just pick it up and be like don't call me no more. Like, I'll be busy then, too, but you could try. Yeah, and I just, like, t- I had this, I talked to this lady once, and I was like, actually, I'm, like, working right now, so I can't, you know. And uh, and I swear to God, tell us called back daily for, like, at least a week. And it's like, man, oh. take the hint. Like, I don't, be happy that I'm paying, that I'm buying internet from you. Like, just, yeah. <laughs> don't make me yeah, so much job. Someone- when it's someone you're already paying, you're like, you already won. You did it. You have my phone? You have my internet? I'm not going to get cable. No, stop what? asking me. I'm not going to stop cable. asking. Yeah. What is this? The 2000s? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've had cable in like, I mean, I, I guess we had it at a, you know, a place I lived before this, before where I'm at right now, but like three, four, three, four years maybe? Yeah, it's been a hot minute since I had cable. What's that? It's been a hot minute since I had cable. Yeah. Do you watch YouTube, like, TV? Do you watch, like, do you subscribe to channels and, like, do you watch any of it? Not really, no. No? I know, like, grown men who are starting to do that. It used to just be, like, the teens that I knew or, like, the young comedians and stuff. But now it's, like, I know, like, 30-year-old men who are, like, yeah, this guy talks about like home renovations. I watch his channel all the time. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's funny because a lot of those, with a lot of like the popular thing, it used to be the kids and then it ends up being the grown ups because the kids grow up a little bit. Like social media is a, like the prime example of like, it was fully a kid's thing. And then like, I think just a bunch of us grew up and continued to, <laughs> to use it. And like that kind yeah. of thing, like just has been around for so long. I often am like, why didn't I watch a YouTube tutorial about that? But yeah but that's the thing i use youtube a bunch like i watch youtube videos a whole bunch but like i don't subscribe to any channels i just search whatever the hell i want to watch and then look at the first couple pages and watch a video (laughs) yeah i like watching like 
uh, like sports highlights. So I'll just put on like, just put on like a fighter's top 20, like yeah, yeah, yeah. or KOs or whatever, and just, just have shit on in the background. I don't know. Yeah. I, was, I do like X games and stuff and like yeah. just big, huge air skateboarders. Yeah. I'm going to have to get sports net back because hockey's coming back in uh, January 13th, which is my brother's birthday. I don't Ooh. think he's because he's not a Utah hockey fan, but I got How many games? What are they playing? Like a 60-some game season? 50, 56, I think. Uh, so What do they usually play? 80-some? 80 82? Yeah, and all the Canadian teams are playing in Canada. Yeah, that's cool. They're like a division of their own. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's... So the Canadian know. team will make the playoffs, so that's cool. Yes. That'll be that'll be fun. Like it'll be cool to you know. Yeah, how's that gonna work? Like the, it'll be a very the one division will be huge and one division will be just the Canadian teams. Yeah, no, the, I saw the division. There was like four or five of them, but the Canadian one definitely is the smallest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's I mean, like two I'm, last. I'm pumped hockey's back, but like, man, the financials in sports right now are crazy. All these teams are losing so much money. Like, really. Well, they, no one's getting their gate revenue anymore. Like, no one's yeah. getting to have fans for the last, like, the NBA, <clears throat> NHL. And they're just like... I always thought it was one of those, like, weird things where everyone was like, oh, yeah, like music. Where they're like, oh, yeah, the money is actually in the fucking merch or whatever. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I think if... I think the Oilers, for example, could clear, like, a million bucks a night at home. Damn. But between, like, from ticket sales, concessions, merchandise. I guess, yeah, liquor and concession is huge. Your, your, home dates, your home dates are everything. If you're a team that's not expecting to make the playoffs or not expected to make the playoffs, and you make the playoffs and you get those extra at least uh, two home dates, potentially a whole bunch more, you're, you're laughing because you're just, like, bathing in extra money. That's why yeah, I do. It's so crazy that, that now now none of that's there anymore. Now it's gone. Yeah. It's not. Well, and like, yeah, even the fucking bubble here, they were like, oh, yeah, the bubble is going to be whatever. It's going to be good for the economy. It's going to help yeah. the business. And, like, it did absolutely nothing. Like, no, How could it? As soon as the Oilers were out of the playoffs, like, everyone I know stopped even talking about hockey. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely put a damper on things. Because this city goes crazy when they're doing well, but, like, when it's over, it's over. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. It's, what do you think about watching sports without fans? How have you, how have you like, how's your experience been with that? I don't like, care. It doesn't really bother me. I've Football is a weird one anyways, because so much, like, there's the huge, like, the benches on the field, and then there's, like, the fucking whole thing, and then the, fans are like 15 feet up so like you don't really yeah. see the fans in the football field anyways i didn't really yeah go ahead you don't hear like especially in football the big plays like the the fans go like oh 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 like that the whole like progression of like a play looking like it might get made and then be like oh nice and then it gets broken off for a long game it's like you don't hear that like fan yeah. Kind of global gasp. Yeah. That's the only thing that's really missing. The NHL did an okay job doing that. They piped in crowd noise with, with like the, uh, like with some of that like heightened drop yeah. different parts. They actually did such a good job that it was like, because that's a fun part of the game, but I don't get yeah. it if it's fake really now that I've sort of been through it. With, with the NHL, just kind of like, it's a nice like environment builder. The one sport though, where it's, I feel like it's made the hugest difference. And it, 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 lately there's just been a lot of really good fights between like boxing and, and MMA, but fighting, oh my God, it's yeah. silent. And like, I, I, always, weird. I always loved the, uh, the like dramatic walkouts. Uh, yeah, there, there's one that always like stuck out of my mind. Like I don't even know what fight it was, but Anderson Silva in his prime coming out to uh, uh, "Ain't No Sunshine" by DMX. It's, <laughs> like it's such a like, it's such a dope song, and it starts out with just like some crazy bass, and like they turn the lights out, and like the whole crowd is going nuts, and like every the whole thing is, 
and the whole scene's building up and like the song right right as like the, the drum starts he like starts walking out and shit and it's just like oh i remember i just remember i was watching that i mean like that is so sick like that's such an intense moment but that's gone and i've been watching these boxing fights where they, they still do the big like little movie ahead of time and like and the guy just walks like comes out and like walks to the ring but there's no like maybe they've got some people there but it's like woo. And yeah it's like that part of the atmosphere well, is gone and i would bet i would imagine that in fighting the the like momentum swings probably have something to do at times at least with the crowd going like like if a guy lands a punch and the crowd's like oh shit it's about to be over I, I I I know that that like energizes the guy even more, and like he you know probably hits another gear. But that's all. It's wild that that's all gone. Well, fight like fighting such a funny thing because it's like being at the bus stop. Like the fight would be so stupid if it was just like two kids in high school. Like yeah, they're like eh eh, but like because yeah. there's like forty other kids around, be like fight. Fight, fight, fight! And people yeah, are throwing so cool. bags and shit, and like everyone's losing their mind. Yeah. Like, there's the craziest thing, and like some teacher comes out, I was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" And it was like really like one punch got thrown, but the school buzzes about it for like weeks because yeah. it's just like this whole fucking ritual behind it. Yeah, and it's like yeah, now, now it's like you and your friend got into like an argument in their bedroom, and like you're stupid. And when she was like, you cut on your face, you go home, and your parents are like, you guys are best friends. You have to apologize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like that's the kind of fight that's happening now. It's like watching it's these fights, like, and it's just dead silent. You see a guy like huge knockout, and you're just like, whoa, that was crazy. That's <laughs> yeah. And, and then just lays really there for a little while. The atmosphere out of, <laughs> out of the Everyone moment. tweets about him. Man, there was a fight last weekend. Uh, Canelo Alvarez versus this British guy, Callum Smith, who was like, Alvarez is like 5'8", and this guy was like 6'4", or something. Like, way taller than him. Had like a huge reach advantage. But uh, Canelo won. Like, just kid, like whooped his ass. And one of the things he did to beat him so this Callum Smith guy has his counter left hook is really like one of his strong weapons. So Canelo Alvarez just beat the shit out of his bicep with like, <laughs> that. That would, be like, that would be like a blocked body shot normally. Like, but he just, just beat so that he had a huge, like he couldn't, he could still jab, but he couldn't throw. He couldn't throw his crazy left. It was like such Yo, a crazy strategy. Man. That's one thing that is, like, so funny to me that, like, some of those armchair idiots don't understand that they're, like, he fucking blocked it. It's, like, yeah, that still hurts so bad. Like, he's still punching your own fist into your face as hard as he can. Like, put your hand here and let me hit it as hard as I can. See how good blocking a punch is. Alex, if, if, I, let, if, I, if I let Canelo Alvarez take five shots at me, and I was fully allowed to block each one, I would still be going to the hospital. Yeah, like, like the guy, you know, it, what, look up the photo. It's, it's, see if you can find it. It's insane because you see him walking away after the fight and it's just like, Doosh. and, and, yeah. and he, he said that in the 12th round, Canelo looked at him, looked down at the swelling and was like, is it sore? And then laughed. And they were both, they both kind of shared a chuckle over like, yeah, I, Fucked you up, dude. Yeah, I see what you're doing here. Yeah. Hey, you know how you're taller and have a longer reach? I'm going to just disable your arm. The, it was insane. So, you just like, clubbing it the whole time? Yeah, man. It's crazy. I love that. I love the, like, fight strategy sometimes, like, is just, like, so insane. Like, the time Muhammad Ali was like, I'm just going to tire out George Foreman. Like, I'm just yeah, going to wait forever. Until yeah. he's sleepy. Yeah. And then just knock him out. And then, like, uh, uh, GSP against, um, what the hell was his name? The fucking Diaz. Oh. Was it Nick Diaz? Yeah. Where he just, like, clobbered his left eye and he couldn't take an airplane home because they're like, uh, yeah, it's unsafe for you to go, like, in oh, the fucking God. pressure change. Uh, dude, that's <laughs> insane. But yeah. like he just threw jabs. He just threw jabs for like 25 straight minutes. Just, I'm going to feed you 
270 fucking shots to the exact same spot. Deal yeah. with it. Canelo was two to one in power punches and jabs against this guy. It's like absolutely insane. Bye. Uh, one of the, the best example in, in the in UFC, apart from like GSP just like gouging an eye or like blowing an eye up, is the guy like chopping down the lead leg with kicks. You see that all oh, the time. Yeah. The guy has his like a guy's like a like an insane stand-up boxer, like maybe even insane on the ground, but they'll just chop down your leg until you can't stand anymore. <laughs> your knee is just like it looks like a fucking flamingo. It's just thin yeah. and then a bulb in the middle and then thin. Yeah. It's like to be fair, I can no longer fight because you've broken my leg. Uh, <laughs> that's I guess that's a good strategy. It's like how are you gonna combat your his jujitsu with your Muay Thai? I'm gonna break his leg so he can't fight. I'm gonna break his leg. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, uh, have you tried breaking his leg? Yeah. Hmm. The crazy thing, though, in the boxing world is there's, like, right now, there, I've been, like, getting way into boxing lately, and there's so many, like, like, true super fights that could possibly happen right now, like, in, you know, in 2021. But, like, they're all, I feel like, sort of, sort of relying on being able to make a shit ton of money at the gate by having fans yeah. and like yeah. that's probably not going to be the case for a minute still so it's like yeah, I don't think uh, so. it would well I, f I feel like i feel like packed events probably unless you hold it in like wuhan or places that are already like back to normal there's but, fucking las vegas man like hold it in miami they don't give a fuck well, they don't. They don't care. It is marked. You just probably won't be allowed to. Like, you know, it needs to be a sanctioned fight. <laughs> but, but if you yeah, aren't they like, or isn't shit still fine? Like, isn't the U.S. just being like whatever? Like, they have like twenty thousand people at NFL games right now. Yeah, I don't know. Well, the, see, that's that's the thing though. Is like twenty thousand in a hundred thousand seat stadium for like for some of these boxing matches, you could fit you could fit a hundred k in in some of these huge stadiums. And if you're doing all of that for 20000 that's not worth it. I like, guess. Yeah, they'll probably just fucking sell them at a huge premium. They're like, all right, fucking Chris Brown and Rihanna and fucking, or I guess that was a bad two to say next to each other, but it was. <laughs> Rihanna and like Daisy and fucking. But here's the thing. Some people stream these things illegally. So. Yeah. So I have heard some people do that. If I ever found the person, you know, if there was someone in my building that was doing that, they would hear from me real quick. Yeah, condo, condo board member James. Yeah, I'd want to know what site they're using. Uh, <laughs> it's expensive. It's an expensive habit to try and... Are you on a condo board, Jim? I am. I, I am. knew it. I'm the youngest one. I'm so shocked. <laughs> they, they tricked me. They were like, they, they were... They didn't realize that being like, I think you'd be good on it would, would, would be flattering enough for me to be like, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. Okay. What, uh, how often do you have to do meetings? Once a month. Once a month. Do you always yeah. go? Do you go to every single one? Yeah, no, you got, I've only had a few so far. Uh, it's, you know, they're, they're kind of boring, to be honest, but it's pretty. Yeah, what do you talk about? Like budget? Just go, just go through this whole list of things, like, you know, different repairs that are happening, budget stuff, and, but none of it really, like... It's always money. I feel like every single meeting is just like, hey, there's how much money you have, there's how much money we need. That's Anybody got any ideas? I mean, it's a business, dog. <laughs> I guess. It's a corporation, right? So that you kind of... Yeah, it feels like the condo up. board is just like volunteer accounting. Yeah, that seems to be a lot of it. And I'm just like, keep it away from me because you're not going to get any math out of this guy. <laughs> like, if you want me to look over the financials, be prepared. Bad maths. Yeah, if you want me to write something or proofread something, holler at your boy. Oh, if, you, if you want me to figure out what, how, how, how the investments are doing and shit, no. No, not for you. If it's spreadsheets, there's probably someone else who can do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if I wanted to do it, I couldn't. Find someone else. 
I'm not. Yeah, man, I've never opened Microsoft Excel in my entire fucking life. Can I admit that on camera? Just don't admit that on your next job application. I, bro, what job do you think I'm gonna be applying for that needs Excel? That's true. That's true. Plus, you can always just say, "Yeah, I know it," and you like might not ever have to use it. So. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. There's a guy that does the financials. There's someone else that knows that shit. There's there's like a there's like a property manager person who like handles a lot of stuff. But in my building, lots of people are retired, so some of the board people have like just they're at the building all the time, so they can do more shit. Do you know those? They're like, well, I'm, cool. like oh, I'm working from home. Yeah, but pretty busy. It's got a lot to do. There's a lot of super long files. Oh. Yeah, a lot of filing. A lot of I can't even get into it. Really, it's it's. I can't. Crazy. It's top secret. It's pretty. Do you ever just tell people that your government work is top secret so that you don't have to deal with their bullshit? No, no one actually. No one gives a shit what I do for work. So. Oh, no one cares. You're like, like tell, me tell you. They're like, no. Yeah, like tell me something about this, and I'm like. No one's no one's ever like pestered me for information about what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and so by as soon as you start, they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, wow, this is, sounds boring. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sort of doing that part on purpose, but yeah. I have friends, I like when friends or like when people have like a code for their job. Like they don't like saying what they do, so they always just say like yeah. some other thing it's either the coolest job in the world or the lamest job in the world yeah do you have any examples like whenever so, i have a friend who just says that he works for the government like that's all he ever says he's just like oh, i just work for the government yeah yeah that's pretty and, much all i say because even even when i like describe yeah. a little bit more people are like i still don't know what that means and i'm like yeah yeah he's a cop though he just oh okay he doesn't like no, telling I've, people. I've heard that one. I've heard that one. I dated a cop way back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Or like when someone someone city. is in a pyramid scheme, they'll be like, "I'm in finances," oh. or like, "I'm a I'm a business owner." Yeah, I I hate how they. That's the one thing that bothers me the most. I think about all these like multi level marketing things is how they flaunt the word small business owner. Like, well, yeah, are you like okay on a technicality? Sure. But yeah, yeah. Real? Okay, you registered for an LLC. Congratulations. Yeah, you're not a fucking, you're not a, oh, man. I, I'm i glad only one person's ever tried to rope me into one of those. Oh, man, I've had a few, but it was always when I was, like, young, and it was always, like, I, I don't know. It feels like my, not my personality, but just, like, the person I am leaves me susceptible to it all the time because I, whenever anyone's like, Hey, you want to come to a party? I'm like, fuck yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I really ask back. details about the party. It's funny when you look back on like the grooming process and you're like, yeah. Oh, you fuck. some guy that I hadn't talked to in years was like, let's meet up for coffee at Sorrentino's. And I was like, Ooh, fancy. Yeah. Yes, well, that was know. every time it was, for me. It was one of my like buddies. It was like a friend, like an actual yeah. friend. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Cut it out, dude. I just I'll never forget going like I. So once I sort of figured out what it probably was, because he never he would like go great lengths to not really say what the thing yeah. actually was. Well, like as soon as you're vague like that, like the journalist in me kicked in, and I'm just like. I just kind of wanted to see what would happen. So I, I went to one of these convention things with him. And oh, like, yeah. Oh, my God. Men crying. Guys, like, with, like, this at it, this kind of, like, oh, man, isn't this great? Like, that kind of a vibe. And it's like, this is yeah. great. Have a guy go up and just be like, I swear to God, their, their whole method was have a guy go up and, and, like, talk about how successful and awesome he is. And then halfway through his thing, start crying a little bit. And people are like, he's so cool and he's so real. Oh my God. And I just sat there. I sat there next to my friend. I was fucking, I was so uncomfortable. I was just like, man, this is so stupid. But I had to like play it cool until it was over. I was like, I'm, 
Like, we're not friends anymore, dude. This is yeah, like, we're like, not hanging out. out. And I, like I could see how into it my friend was, and I was just like, well, I say friend. I could see how into it this guy was, and I was just like, we're different people, man. Ooh. Man, one of my friends, he was like, he, it was a world financial group. Mm. And he told me that he, like, he was starting a new internship and he needed someone to do, like, a practice thing with. And if I would come by, and I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And because, here's the thing, I had another buddy who was getting, like, certified to be a personal trainer. And their final exam, they needed like a volunteer to do like a walkthrough class with. So sure. I'd gone and like been like the walkthrough patient for my buddy in the thing. And like I heard like nurses needed to fucking work on whoever. So my buddy's like, oh yeah, I'm doing this financial thing and they need like a guy for a walkthrough. I was like, okay. And I get there, like sit me down and start trying to like ask me about my fucking finances. And, like uh, I finally uh, broke financial group. I was like, what the fuck? Like, no, get out of here. Stop talking to me. My buddy's whole pitch was like, again, buddy, uh, dude's whole pitch was like, are you happy with your job? Like, when you think about it, do you want to be, you know, like where your boss is? Like, do you want to be doing that? You know, in, in how many years? And it's uh, and like designed to be like, oh, you could be your own boss. <laughs> I, remember, yeah. I remember just being intrigued by this like brainwashing that he'd undergone where he's like, actually pit because i would feel like a doofus pitching this shit to actual friends of mine being oh, like I know. giving them giving them the whole spiel like like the actual talking points i would feel like such a dork being like well actually did it you know if i was pitching it to my friends you know if you pitched it like you know like we're talking right now normally it would it would still sound stupid but when you hear the well, yeah, that's the thing it's like you can't pitch it like how you and i are talking because it would sound insane it sounds like absolutely insane for me and you to be talking this would be like well the the market creates itself like yeah, yeah, through yeah. through the system i just need you to sell toilet paper to your parents i'm selling toilet paper to my parents and then hopefully one of your parents knows someone who also needs toilet paper and hey man, yeah, but people people buy these things anyways why not buy them from you yeah they're your friends they're going to support your business instead of some big box store yeah. Why? No. Oh man, it's so, it's so cringeworthy. It's bananas, dude. Yeah. I had a bunch of buddy. I had like it's funny because, I like. For some reason, I thought that it was new. Like every time that happened to me, because no one like warns you about it. Like when you're 16, no one's like, "Hey, by the way, this is World Financial Group, and this is Cutco, and this is fucking, uh, what's the other one?" Amway, yeah, and fucking. There's so um, many of them. What's the other one that I got? Amway, Cutco, World Financial Group. Oh, the vacuum. What's the vacuum one? Oh, I never got that one. Oh, dude, there's like this vacuum thing. This was the best. We got fucking wasted this day. So I can't remember why, but at my old house it was like a frat house. There was three people living there all the time, but it was kind of like a rotating door. There was me and my buddy Stetson and then like a third kind of rotated through. Yeah. And uh, it, there was one point where this girl, Lisa, was living with us and she was going to university part-time, I think, or maybe full-time, but she always seemed to have time off. And I was like bartending and doing comedy and like I wasn't working very much. And my buddy Stetson was like just starting as an accountant. So Stetson was working full time and like doing real jobs. And me and Lisa would just fucking party and like do whatever and like do crafts in the afternoon. <laughs> Shit. And so like this one day, we we're just getting like wasted on margaritas or whatever the hell. And this guy came by to sell this vacuum. And they sell, apparently it's like, if you Google it, it's everyone's like, yeah, this is fucked. It's like this stupid thing. I forget yeah. what they're called, but they say it's like they have a generational warranty. So they're like, when oh, you die, uh, your kids have a lifetime warranty on their vacuum that you gave them. That's how much we believe in our products. Like that's the whole fucking thing. And so they go around and they're like vacuuming. And so we like had this dude in our house for like 
three hours while we were just like drinking. We kept being like, ah, oh, we gotta wait for Stetson to get home because like he fucking he's the one who makes the money. Like he's out of work. Like we're just here drinking on a Thursday. Like we gotta wait for him. And Lisa like kind of actually wanted one, but then me and my other buddies who were over drinking. We're just fucking with this guy. So we got him to vacuum like half our fucking house for us. He vacuumed like the stairs. He vacuumed shit off my pillow. He was like vacuuming stuff out of my beard at one point. He vacuumed your beard. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> It was so funny because he had this little, like, that was the whole thing was he'd take the vacuum, but where the vacuum bag's supposed to go, he puts, like, this little fiber thing that catches everything, and then he lays it out and shows you, like, I bet you didn't even know this was all inside your floor, and he's, like, picking shit out to show you that it was, like, deep oh, in your carpets, you know, the fuck. God. And he's, like, talking up the warranty, and then he keeps being, like, look, I need to sell two more vacuums, and I'll win a prize. I, I can give this to you. Look, I don't know if I do. I can do this. I'll have to call my manager, but I've been I've been able to give people fifty percent off. And like two hours later, he's like, "All right, I might be able to get seventy percent off this thing if you do a payment plan through us and you get the warranty. It's still gonna qualify. I still gonna go on my vacation. You guys are doing me a huge favor." Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> and this dude stayed at our house for so long. Well, we were just getting wasted and making him vacuum shit. And then Stetson gets home. We're like, ah, oh, Stetson, like, there he is. We're like, how's work? He's like, we're like, dude, this dude wants to sell us a vacuum. It's like supposed to be like 1200 bucks or something, like 2000 and some crazy amount of money. Like, they yeah. say it's like a $7,000 value or whatever the fuck. And they're like, we'll give it to you for 1200 bucks or whatever. And then we're like, Stetson, we just need you to put up half. We'll put up the other half. And he was like, no. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> just me and I was like, absolutely not. Get out of here. The guy was so mad. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was the best. Yeah, he was Stetson up his world perfectly. We knew Stetson would immediately be like, no, because of course, why would he buy a fucking? Why would he put up Caesar and bucks for a vacuum? Yeah, and vacuums are funny because I was I had to buy one, and I was talking to my coworkers about it, women, and they're like. Uh, Oh, you got to get this like $700 one. You got to get the $600 one. Like the Dyson. One for like 80 bucks or something. And they're like, you're going to regret it because it's going to, it's only going to last a year or something. And you're going to have to buy another one. I'm like, yep. For 80 bucks again. And, and they're like, yeah, like, I got 10 years worth of vacuums before it cost me as much as yours did. Man. They're like, no, you have to get it. You'll rec- you'll notice a difference. And I'm like, I don't think I will. Yeah. I don't think I will. It's crazy, dude. Like, I don't know. I understand, like, don't get the cheapest vacuum in the store because it's going to break like anything else. But, like, yeah, unless you have, like, a mansion with, like, drapes that you need those, like, fancy attachments for. and yeah. like, I'm talking hardwood in this motherfucker. So it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what do you... Dust. Like, <laughs> you got shag? Like, what do you need a deep cleaning? Like, oh, man. Everyone's all, oh, people are always like, oh, get the most expensive of some dumb thing you don't want to spend money on. You're like, I'm not doing that. Yeah, like, no, nah, I'm going to not. Are you done your Christmas shopping, Alex? <laughs> yeah. Do you have much to do? do? Do you have a lot of, no, me neither. What's the worst, what's the worst, like, the worst thing you bought online for someone that when it showed up, you were like, What? I've never really bought anything online. One time my girlfriend was mad at me, so I bought her, like, a two teddy bear sloth because she likes sloths a lot. Yeah. And it came in the mail. But she, like, ordered shoes or something like that. And so she thought that's what it was. And she opened it up, and it was, like, vacuum sealed. So it was, like, this big, like, bug-eyed sloth. Like, vacuum packed, and all its, like, hair was standing up. So it looked like this horrific monster. <laughs> so she was like mad at me for something. And then I bought her a present to like make her feel better. And she thought she was getting shoes and she was like, No! Nah! What is oh this? My and I was like, God. No, no, get out of the package. You'll be happy. You'll like it. You'll like it. You'll like it. Dude, I have you ever seen like the burrito blanket advertised? For it's like real? A, it's like a it's like a blanket that's supposed to look like a burrito shell. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like I saw that once and was like, oh, this would be kind of a cute present for a girlfriend, you know? And uh, there's like, there must be like a lot of scammy ones out there because I ordered one and I thought I was, I thought I was getting like the right, the, the, the official one. And I swear to God, man, it showed up. Number one, not a blanket. It was like, it was like tablecloth material. And it didn't look like a burrito. It looked like a close up of a teenager's face. And I swear, to God, <laughs> I swear to God, it just looks like close up acne on this, oh. big, on a big scale. And it's like, I got it and it was like, what the fuck is this? And it's like, well, what am like, I what am I gonna do? Re return it? Or am I gonna call the cops? Hey, I ordered a burrito blanket and I got some something else. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah. And then what do you do? You're like, oh shit, this was supposed to come. Like, I waited three weeks for this. Like, so oh. I bought your present like way ahead of time, but it turns out that it sucks. So like, now I wasted money, so I have less budget to spend on your present, and also like, way less time to think of something cool to get you. Yeah, and also here you go. Yeah, here's this fucking acne cloth. My, my favorite thing now, though, is like, we're not together anymore, and I still have it. And I'm like, I really want to give it to Goodwill or someone just, mm -hmm. just to know that someone's going to pull it out and be like, what is this? <laughs> what could this possibly be? Did somebody send is this from a picture of his or something? acne or something? Like, it's, like, <laughs> it's mind-blowingly, like, not a burrito. Like, it, it's... <laughs> You've never seen something like this. <laughs> I mean, you've never seen anything not look so much like a burrito. If you wrapped yourself <laughs> in it, if you wrapped your torso in it and pulled up your shirt, people would think you had burns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the gnarliest thing. <laughs> oh, you just got like a Buffalo Bill costume for it? Yeah, and it, so it goes for something like, oh, this is kind of adorable. Wrap yourself up like a little blanket to like uh Holy shit, what's that wrapped around you? <laughs> like, oh, do you have sores? Yeah, oh my god. Is everything okay? Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah, the sloth doesn't feel so bad now anymore. Yeah, I really do want to see like someone else get it and, and try to decipher, like, is this a tablecloth should... skin? <laughs> you should just put it in one of those, like, gift exchange, like, yeah. <laughs> just who cares if it's used? I just fought so you've never you actually used it. Tissue paper for a present. Someone will be like, what the fuck is this? Just fifty dollars worth of it? Like whatever the limit is, just keep pulling it out. Yeah. Oh man. Like I just spend whatever the budget is on wrapping paper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just a huge bag and like tissue. <laughs> yeah, because this present sucked, so I had to make the presentation nice. <laughs> that's so funny yeah i don't like have you ever gotten a really bad gift i always oh, hear yeah. people talk about like the worst present i ever got i don't think i've ever oh, got yeah. something that i was like how dare you there's only one that i can think of because like family stuff like whatever like my my, my family's big into like the, the goofy like gag gifts sometimes so yeah I'm getting some like some you know totally goofy shit sometimes yeah, we would always get, like, weird, like, obviously our grandparents didn't want to buy us, like, R-rated video games, mm -hmm. so we would get, like, weird, like, just kind of childish video games when we were, like, 15, 16. Uh, yeah. My, but, my, like, family, my family, like, commits to the bed. Like, my sister one year got me a full life-size cardboard cutout of myself. That's, that's all like, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's just, like, in my, in my storage room. My, my mom came that's back, so yeah. funny <laughs> my mom came back from china a little while ago and she brought me back like uh basically like a like a security police uniform with all the little badges and shit <laughs> 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 like, just because so now i have this like very realistic looking security thing that like it just so anyways my family loves that kind of stuff but uh oh. I, I was with someone uh, i was dating someone years ago and you know, we've been together for a few years at this point, so I'm thinking, like, you know, we know each other pretty well. You know, I like to see what people get me, because I really like getting gifts for other people, because it's, like, a chance to be, like, oh, like, I know you. Here's I know something like, about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's this one that stands out for me. I, I open the thing. I open the package, and it's 
It's a package of black socks where each pair had the name of a day of the week on it in different, stitched in in different colors. And that's the only time in a relationship that I've been like, whoa, thanks. I really yeah, like Yeah, what? This is really good. Thank you for giving me that's what okay do i always find it weird beyonce gave me socks motherfucker yeah dude that's i always find it weird when someone does something like that where like you can tell that it was like an expensive gift you're like getting like embroidered socks is like oddly expensive for what it is i'm sure And it's like, you wasted your money to get me something I don't want. Like, why did yeah. you do this? Yeah, there was another, there was another, like, anniversary. Different girl. I, like, bought her a bunch of shit. Because, you know, whatever. Bought, bought a bunch of, you know, a few different presents. And I got back, like, a French press. Just, like, a coffee thing. It's like, <laughs> just. They're beautiful. They're just, nice. like, a, I, it's, like, just from, like, a Starbucks or something. It's, like. Like, I already have one, but okay, thanks, I guess. Like, <laughs> I used it today, actually, so there you go. I guess that worked out. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, my, my so brother does. You get the present, you're like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> my brother always did the funniest, like, we never really got each other presents for much. Like, Christmas, we'd get each other, like, one little thing or whatever, and then, like, on our birthdays, we'd just get each other like a card but my brother would always find like the corniest like sappiest brother card that he could and like some of them are so funny they're like two pages long about like how a brother is god's blessing and shit and so like me and him would just fucking die like reading these cards and everyone around us is like what are you two idiots laughing at we're like bro this is so it's like you're such a sweet blessing and i can't believe the lord gave you to oh me my god. It's little brother it's like oh my god who buys these who is this really yeah. cool? <sighs> oh man. Like we're laughing at whoever actually spent nine dollars on this card to give it to someone for real it's yeah. like that's the best present i've ever got is you giving me the fake version of something that someone gave someone for real. Yeah. <laughs> like, just be look how stupid this is. Someone spent money on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bought this just for you because it feels stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, it's like the equivalent of those memes. You ever see those? like long video memes and at the end it's like lol just kidding tag a friend for no reason to like waste their time and make them watch this video yeah it's basically it was that but in like birthday card form (laughs) like this whole card was just like not true at all you know that like happy birthday good nice good for you man (laughs) nailed it (laughs) Like that's how we've always felt about each other in our birthdays. But oh my <laughs> look God. at this. This is what other people try and do for each other. Here's what other people try and do for each other. Yes. <laughs> look at these uh, losers. Well, on that <laughs> festive note, we're about an hour into the show. It's our oh, it's, hell yeah. I guess this is our holiday episode, so Yeah, Merry uh, Christmas. Yeah. Shout out to baby. Hey, Merry so. dead you birthday kind of birthday kind of. Uh, That's my Christmas carol. <laughs> I suggest not going caroling. <laughs> but that's what it is. It's a dead Jew's birthday kind of because it was actually some other time apparently. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's true. I'm just saying what it is to a melody. Jupiter and Saturn are are linking up, and it's like the Christmas star. And I saw some, some like, scientist people being like, it has nothing the fuck to do with Jesus. It's not the Christmas star. It's two planets coming close. Stop trying to religious, uh, religiousize everything. Yeah. It's not about you, Catholics. Yeah. Yeah. It's about getting a couple weeks off of school and or work to get drunk with your friends and spend a little money on yourself for once. 
because yes. fuck these corporations. Treat yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, Christmas really is just a treat yourself day from mm. Parks and Rec, but for the whole planet, or for the whole, at least our country. Yeah. Which, like, I'm, you know, on that level, I'm pretty down with it. Yeah. I like getting presents. Yeah. All yeah. right, well. Where can people find later. you? Huh? Where can people find you? Uh, in my fucking house. Uh, you can find me at AF Comedian or go to comedyaf.com and all this stuff is there. Nice. Where can people find you, James? At Kersey, at the Valley City. You can find me everywhere, but mostly at home, like you said. And on Zoom from time to time. So that's oh. it. All day breakfast. Okay. Whenever you listen to this, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>